Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club, your local Holden Certified Service Centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online. G'day, I'm Fletch and welcome as I bring you to Menangle, New South Wales. Today, a slightly different show where accolades are given to all types of flathead powered vehicles. This is Flathead Day 2022, put on by the early Ford V8 Club of New South Wales in this week's Classic Restos on the road. The internal combustion engine, it's an engineering marvel and the first petrol engines that were designed and built around the turn of the last century were mostly side valves incorporating a flat cylinder head. They were used through until around about the mid 1950s to then be replaced by the more efficient overhead valve type designs with a rocker cover. There's no doubt that the flathead is the pioneer and with its simplistic design it's been held in high regard by enthusiasts around the world for almost a century. What a great day this is. It's showcasing the history of the flathead engine and obviously because it's put on by the great people from the early Ford V8 Club of New South Wales, there's quite a few Fords here. So Pete, we're gonna have a chat with you. Yep. We've got a 1928 A model. Yep. Four cylinder car. Four cylinder car. Yep. Beautiful example. Yep, thanks very much. Yes, I can't take credit for the restoration. It was done in Victoria, but I've I purchased the car at the beginning of the year and um, haven't had a chance to get it out too much because of the weather, but we're getting, I've been tinkering with it and making a few little improvements, but I'm trying to keep it as true to 1928 as I can. Uh, this car is an early 28, which um, has a, people call them an AR, um, but it's just classified really as an early 28. It was made in May of 1928. The handbrake is on the driver's side because it only has a single brake system rather than the, the dual brake system which Henry put in later in um, 28 to, as a safety feature and, and because of a few regulations in a few states. Um, so it has all the early features um, with the red steering wheel and um, the, the, the brake on the side and um, it, it, it's a fun car to drive and a fun car to own because I'm trying to keep it as period as I can. Yeah. As the years are rolling by, the more and more respect and interest that I have for Henry Ford uh, back in the beginning. Uh, the Paquette plant, uh, having visited that now a few times in Detroit and Highland Park, obviously where the assembly line took place a little bit later on. Um, the incredible transition from the T to the A. Now, Henry didn't really want to change the T. No, he, he, yeah, he was, was quite... Idea uh, from, right from the pressure and pressure. Yeah. And I believe um, Henry's wife actually threatened to leave him unless he changed his car. And um, so that, that really prompted him along a bit to come up with a new car and, <laughs> and a sensationally new car yeah. after a Model T. He was quite content just to keep on going with the T. It was uh, a very basic car, uh, very agile, and it certainly uh, put wheels under thousands of people around the world. But the transition into the A, we stepped into class. Absolutely. What a classy looking car. Absolutely. That, the design was much more um, modern and Edsel having been the designer of the, um, the Lincolns and he wanted to make it, I mean they called it a baby Lincoln back in the day, just the, that much more modern design and with the sliding gearbox as well and you know, four wheel brakes and so many modern features that were unheard of with the Model T. 
then later on too, uh, moving into the, the realms of what the Lincoln Zephyr and uh, what a, an incredible motor car they All were. The styling features like carried over into the normal yeah. forward line. Now, uh, talk about talking about things carrying over. Now, the four-cylinder engine that was in the T, much difference between that and what's sitting in this uh, one? It's, it's much more powerful. I think the T had 20 horsepower, this has 40. Um, the design is a bit different. Uh, the cubic capacity, Peter? Uh, 200 cubic inch, yeah, yeah, 40 horsepower. And it's a slugging, long stroke motor. I mean, once you, once you, your first two gears are really only to get you moving. You can just about drive it in top gear and it just slugs along. Really, you know, it doesn't need the rev. But, uh, you just cut it along and bounce around the bouts and it's not, no worries. <laughs> The restoration here, flawless, can't help think what it must have been like in 1928. It would have looked pretty well like this oh, when, it, exactly, yeah. when it rolled out of its dealership. It's yes, pretty much. Um, this is um, Arabian sand, which is one of the only four colours that were available back then. Mm. I'm not sure what the other ones were. They were pretty drabby colours, but um, they weren't like bright red or um, brute. They, a few of those colours came along a bit later in the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this was one of the early cars. One of the this car came in actually before, from what I've been able to research, before it was actually released to the public in early June. So this was one of the cars that were brought in to get ready for the release to the public, send it around to the dealers. Um, so it was there ready to when 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 it was released, so everybody could come in and have a look at the car. Uh, a lot of the the sports coupe thing. There was only about 500 or so sports coupes brought in in the first batch. Um, a lot of chassis were brought in for Phaetons and Roasters and those cars were then built in the Ford factory in Geelong into bodies. So the Model A starting production, the end of 1927, 1928 here this one, moving on through to 1932, the release then of the V8. Yeah. Could you imagine that time? He skipped a six, went yeah. from four to the eight. Yeah. Interesting because the six cylinder was done earlier in the piece and uh, maybe that's a subject for another day. Um, but Peter, I want to thank you so much. What a brilliant example of a Model A uh, with a four cylinder engine, uh, restored to perfection. Well done. Thanks, Pete. Thank you very much, Fletch. Have a good one. Good anyway. thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Like Dad, I've always been a Ford man. The Falcon Squire wagon was unloved in 1964, but turns heads today. The Americans call them woodies, but the panelling, it's just fibreglass and plastic. But it's a passion that Shannon's understands, which is why my Fords are insured with Shannon's. And now, so's the home. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. When it comes to cars, there are some brands that will remain with us forever, no matter what. The Holden was always Australia's own car, held high in the hearts of many. Those lines, that chrome, the stories around them and the people that owned them. From the classic through to the final, you can still trust in genuine Holden and AC Delco parts, available through the Holden Certified Service Network. Welcome back. How are you, Rob? Oh, fantastic. Fletch, how are you? Good, mate. You enjoying walking around and having a yarn with the boys? Exactly, yeah. This is uh, my, one of my dreams, <laughs> hanging around hey, cars, yeah. A Sunday therapy session. It is, yes. Yeah, very, very therapeutic. <laughs> Rob, I've picked on you today an absolutely glorious two-door car here, a 1944 Deluxe sitting here in all its exuberance. What a smashing-looking car. This thing is stunning. And, of course, hosting the flathead up front. Before we start talking about a little bit of the history of the car, just give us a quick rundown on the mechanicals. OK. Um, it's completely standard except for a 12-volt system. The motor is uh, original. 221? 221, yep. yeah. Interesting, in 1932, the first of the side valve V8 and the Ford, 221 cubic inches. We're still running that in 1940, but we've got more power, uh, Rob, right? Yeah, correct. Uh, and, uh, yep, this is also running a 4-inch Mercury crankshaft, and, uh, which is a longer stroke. The heads have been worked, only like machines 
to get it up. But every else in the motor is completely standard, yes. We step inside, a whole new world awaits. We've got the Art Deco dash there, 1940 actually, well, getting towards the end of the Art Deco period. Absolutely stunning. Couldn't help but notice the clock in the, the lid of the uh, the glove box and the wire running to it for the light. Yes. Uh, we're talking 1940. It's also got the standard Ford Deluxe radio as part of the dash. Um, wow, how, how unique is that? And under the dash, of course, on the firewall, a heater. heater. Standard heater. Now, before I let you go, Rob, we've got we've got a, a real juicy story with this car. This is a story that I love. I've always been intrigued with the, the moonshine boys, those good old boys in the south, yeah. Tennessee, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Yeah. where they ran the shine. Tell us a story here, Rob, as quick as you can. Okay. Uh, the story of this one is uh, I didn't import this car. Yeah. One of our other friends in New South Wales, he went to buy a 46 convertible over there, which he did, and Peter asked him to look out for a 1940 coupe, which he found this one in the same place. It was in a car collector's uh, garage in Oklahoma. But, okay, the car started off in 1940 new. 1942, I believe, um, the police at the time pulled him over. He was doing whiskey running at moonshine. Uh, he went to jail. He ended up being a famous stock car racer, I believe. And the police impounded this car, which they kept in their compound in Oklahoma for 38 years, uh, with 20,000 miles on the clock. 20,000 hard miles. Hard miles they would have been, uh, yeah, <laughs> getting away from the cops, uh, which these were very popular with moonshine, was a yeah. police who were only running around in shivs and yeah. these things got away from them. These were the things that encouraged, the, well, the cops in the States to, to end up getting the V8s. V8s, yeah. yeah, correct. So, yeah, look, so it sat in their compound and then I believe in the late 70s, somebody said you know what's this piece of rubbish still doing in our compound here this was in the oklahoma police station somewhere so they so, they sacked him and got they got <laughs> they got him off on a pension yeah, yeah they yeah. did and so the revenue office then decided they'll sell this and they put it out for auction and a car collector in oklahoma car dealer and collector yeah. he uh he bought it yeah. and he put it in his collection where it sat for another 23 24 years still with twenty thousand miles on it Rob, what a perfect shine car. The room in this thing. Have a go at the size of the trunk in the back. And not only that, being a two-door car, the trunk going right up pretty well to behind the seat, Rob. Yeah, uh, the back of the front seat tilts forward. And, uh, yeah, that's where the moonshine was stored. There was evidence there of uh, where cylinders had been sitting in there, like welded to the floor. Rob, fantastic story. I love it. And uh, thank you so much for sharing it with us. Um, enjoy this car and... Don't drink and drive. <laughs> Don't get caught. <laughs> oh, good, okay. good on you, Rob. That again, mate. Well done. That's a yeah, fantastic yeah. story. They're the they're the, they're they're the stories we chase. So thank you, mate. It's a beautiful, beautiful car. Thank you. With me now, the president of the Early Ford V8 Club of New South Wales. How are you, John? I'm doing well, Fletch. That's the way, mate. Nice to see you. Not a huge show here today. A handful of cars, but some great blokes and uh, well, some nice vehicle examples yeah some nice stuff here a good range of different things from military vehicles to early fords and dodges and t models yeah tell us a bit about your club uh the club's been going since the late 70s um we deal with uh, all early ford v8s from 1932 to 54 um all different body styles mostly all original and um we have many runs yeah. uh we travel we have national rallies and that type of thing yeah John, it's early days here. I think you've got incredible potential because when you when you talk flathead, we're we're really looking at every car from early 1900s through to early 50s of all different brands, all different makes that are potentially welcome to this day. Yeah, well, that was the original concept of it because um, we we obviously only deal with early Ford V8s, but there's so many other flatheads around that um, it'll cover all different makes and it kind of limits the age, so it's not. Um, filled up with late model cars it's all keeps it uh, early era cars now talking of history we've got a lovely 1934 ford behind us your car uh beautiful example here yeah yeah um our family bought it in about 1980 and um my dad and i restored it in 1988 and it's been on the road ever since we've been to every national rally driven it across to um, the hay plains to adelaide three times in queensland and victoria it's been everywhere this thing 
I love hearing these stories. It's amazing the vehicles that have been restored and in some cases unrestored, uh, the longevity, the way they keep running, the years of enjoyment that, that our restored cars can give us. You can't put a price on that. Yeah, no, we'd, it's always been in the family. It's um, yeah, part of our, our life, driving around in this thing and, and restoring. It took us probably six months to restore it in the backyard and yeah, we've driven it everywhere. Interesting era as well with model designations. What's it actually called, John? Well, it's just a early a 1934 uh, Ford V8 coupe. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's all they really were. They had a, a, a four-cylinder available in the era, um, but yeah, mostly were V8s. What's it like to drive? Uh, it's, it's like a modern car to drive, really. Uh, you sit on, sit on 110 on the freeway. Uh, it's got mechanical brakes, and they probably stop better than my fair lane. And um, the, the little skinny wheels on some of them ruts on the road pull you a little bit, but... Um, but yeah, no, it's good on the highway, it gets up and goes, and it's got good power for its day. It's all original, but yeah, the, the, they've got plenty of power, those. So the car was ahead of its time when you when you think of, of what the road conditions would have been like when it was built brand new. You would have been searching back then for a, a good long straight section of road that was in good condition. Yeah, probably. You, you sort of um, get an idea of what those guys were driving on back then, even the truck drivers and that in them old dirt roads. It's pretty wild. John, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, wonderful little uh, gathering here uh, at Menangle. It's a great venue. I've filmed here before. Search on the Shannon's Club for the uh, Steam Fest. I think it was the Menangle Steam Fest yeah, done fun. here. Of, yeah, it's a great weekend. Uh, stationary engines here. It's, it's just a great place to come to. And it's going to be your venue for down the track, yeah? Yeah, we'll, we'll have it here again next year. Yeah. And um, coming up in October, we have our early Ford National Rally at Leeton. Uh, yeah. We'll have about 100 early Fords out there. Yeah. So that'll be a good weekend too. Good on, you. good on you, John. Keep up the great work, mate. Thanks well so done. Much. Thanks for coming. You're yeah. welcome. Thank you. I just need to make a comment as to how cool these cars are. The steel wheels were available with a Model T. Here we have the welded spoke wheel. And don't they look magnificent? That beautiful pastel colour with the chrome centre highlighted with a white wall tyre. Some accessories back in the day for this car in 1934. Now just imagine this car in the showroom about to roll out from the carpet or the, the marble pillars around the beautiful opulent dealerships that were around back in the time in the United States of America. We'll look around the front. We've got some option fog lamps. We've got a chrome grill protector as well. 1934, an interesting time. Some people may have got out of a Model T to get into a car like this or something even more dramatic, possibly even out of a horse and sulky into one of these as their first car. When I was a kid, I loved cars, still do. The 57 Cadillac Eldorado Brougham was the most advanced car in the world. Cost more than a Rolls. Hand built with a stainless steel roof, cruise control, electric seats, and would you believe, air suspension. American iron. It's a passion Shannons understand. That's why they ensure my daily drive, the caddy, my bike, even the house. Call Shannons on 13 46 46. Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. They may not be making the classic Holden anymore, but the legacy lives on. You can still have a Holden certified service using genuine Holden and AC Delco quality parts at over 180 centres across Australia. Go to holden.com.au to find your nearest centre. Book your Holden in, maintain the pride. If you own a classic, when it comes time for insurance, why not give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646 and the Shannon's Club awaits you as Australia's largest automotive online hub. For more information, visit shannons.com.au. And to complement Flathead Day 2022 put on by the early Ford V8 Club of New South Wales, it's another location now to a private residence to feature an amazing 1935 Ford. With us now, how are you, Mike? Really well, thanks, Fletch. That's really good. Really well. Beautiful day. Can't complain. It no. is. And, you know, just to, I guess, uh, to uh, showcase a beautiful day, to have a 1935 Ford such as this in your shed, that's just got to make it just a little bit better, right? Uh, icing on the cake. Icing on the cake. Yeah. Best. What an era where we're talking 1935 here. And uh, to think that in December 1931, it was a very, very interesting time with Henry Ford because the A model was released with a four cylinder engine only. They didn't have a six. Chevy at that time were starting to close the sales gap with their six cylinder car. And the only way that Henry Ford could see light 
at the end of any tunnel to get out of this was to produce a V8. And that was an extraordinary time because there was a time there prior to that where he had to lay off thousands and thousands of workers while he put the plan together. It was a big secret. And then in December of 1931, that's when the 20 millionth A model came off the production line. And what history is that? That's, that's incredible stuff, isn't it? Oh, it, it is. To have 20 million cars come off a line back in that 1920s, 30s mm. is enormous. Yeah. It's hard to replicate that today, yeah. you know, really. This car, what's the story on it, Mike? You've, uh, you've, you've, you've yep. bought it restored. We, we know who the last owner was, so tell us, how did you get the car? Okay, well, the previous owners, back a couple, um, restored this car to originality back in 1994 to about 1995. And the family owned this car for about 14 years. Me and my wife acquired this car back in said, all three years ago. It's a beautiful car. This, is, uh, this has been restored uh, quite a while ago, as you, as you just said, Mike, but it's been done so well. And uh, inside the upholstery, and we look at the hood lining, um, the dashboard, uh, the seats, everything is perfect. And you can only think, if it looked this good back in 1935, when it left the local Ford dealership or the garage or wherever you bought the car from at the time, Wow. In the 30s as well, they really took on some uh, rev revolutionary lines, some beautiful sweeping lines. They weren't a dead square car by any means. Um, and it made sense. Um, when you look at the, the, the shape of the, the fenders or the guards here as it's known uh, in Australia, or, or the wings in the UK, they've got that windswept look about them streamlined, just beautiful. Yeah, mar marvellous. It's almost like, to me, the ultimate shape of a, of a fender. Absolutely. I mean, the car's nearly 90 years old. Mm. And you look at it and think, geez, a 90-year-old car it looks mm. like this? Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, does it? No, it no. doesn't. It, it, it's a long time to have 90 years yeah. behind you in one vehicle. And you'd also think, too, that a, that a product that's 90 years of age would be awful to drive. But it's not. No, no. It is quite... Good. It yeah. goes quite fast. Mm. The brakes are fairly good. You've just got to watch yourself with the braking system, but yeah. it goes really well. Yeah. It's a lovely car, yeah. and it's hard to fault anything with yeah. it. No, yeah. you've, you've done an extremely good job. So, Mike, rounding off Flathead Day 2022, I thought there'd be no better way than to feature you with this car to round off the, the little day at Menangle. And, uh, mate, thank you so much for being a part of it. Beautiful car and uh, congratulations to you and Sue. Thanks, Fletch. Thank You're you very much. I appreciate it. You're well welcome, done, mate. Cheers. Thank you. The car means a lot to me and a lot more to my wife. Yeah, she loves the car. I love the car, but basically she bought the car. We both adore the car. It's a, an amazing piece of machinery, an amazing piece of everything that, that occupies it, whether it's the seats, whether it's the steering, whether it's the power or whatever it is, it's an amazing car. The car is fantastic. It, it, when we take it for a drive, it, it goes wonderful. The gears in it, there's three gears forward on, on, in the car. The car goes exceptionally well. I've done a few things minor to the car, but nothing really significant or major because the prior people did that. When I'm driving the car, looking out, it goes wonderful. It's just a superb thing. Um, and I'm really happy to have it. 1927, what an incredible time. The release of the A-model Ford hosting a four-cylinder engine with some 10 million people viewing the car in its first week. Chevrolet had a six-cylinder engine and because of that, they were closing the sales gap. The only way out that Henry Ford could see was to produce his V8 engine and by December, of 1931, the 20 millionth A model had set a benchmark. Yeah, so I got a call from Fletch today just asking if we'd like to um, come down, add a little bit to the story on uh, Mike's wonderful 35 Ford over here. This is a car that was very special to our family. So it's um, a car that uh, my father bought, must be about 1990, I guess. Um, the car was all original, very low mileage was something that we'd um, missed out on a couple of years before, so managed to get it back. And I think part of the reason it's so special for me is that it's the only car that my father and I ever built together. 
so from the ground up. So we had this car down to a bare chassis, every nut and bolt, engine, gearbox, diff, everything on the car was rebuilt. And it's, whilst my dad and I have worked on a lot of cars together, this was the only one we've ever done from the ground up. My father sold it, uh, it must be about 1997, um, in a weak moment when he was made, what was at the time, a stupid offer. Um, I was always a bit upset by that because I'd always figured I was going to give this car to my son. Um, so we knew where the car was, we knew who had it in Sydney and we always had a handshake deal that when he was done with it, I could buy the car back. Um, unfortunately, old Paul ended up with uh, dementia, passed away, the family sold the car and we didn't know where it was for nine years. So fast forward about nine years after that, we actually found it advertised for sale on Auto Trader, contacted the gentleman who owned it, had a bit of a conversation with him. He didn't know any of the history of the car. He'd bought it through a dealer on the Gold Coast. Um, so we sent him all the photos of the restoration, everything that had been done with it, to which the next day I got a call back saying, would you like that car back? If you would, this is what I paid for it nine years ago. I'll sell it back to you for the same price. So uh, quick trip in the car that weekend up to Noosa. And um, yeah, we were lucky enough to uh, get the car back. Um, probably kept it at home for another five years. Um, but we have a rather large collection of cars. I had one that I had said to my wife, I would sell it to get this car back. The realisation came to be that I can't sell that car. So um, in the conversations with Mike, when I found out he was interested, I thought he was the right man to, uh, to take possession of this car. And we know where it is. Yeah, it's just a, a lot of memories, so. Cars are more than just steel and rubber and, and all the pieces that put them together and for this car that's certainly true. I think it's the memories with it. It's, um, as I said, it's, it's the only car my dad and I ever built together. This was actually my wedding car 26, 27 years ago. Um, yeah, it's just a very special bit of machinery. It's, it's a big part of me. It's a big part of my heart. Well, that's it for a wrap, and what a glorious wrap it was, featuring just some of the Flathead Day for 2022, and of course this outstanding 1935 Ford belonging to Mike and Sue as the proud owners. I hope you liked it. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can sign up to be a member of the Shannons Club, your local Holden certified service centre, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, and Heron Forbes Machinery House, where you can buy online.